So now today I'm going to uh, continue on the reading of the uh, chart of the new moon uh, with the uh, transits of the moon. When it reaches Neptune, as I've mentioned in the previous uh, first video, uh, it's going to trigger our spiritual dimension. It's going to trigger something that has to do with uh, what we believe and what we need to believe. Perhaps to make us more comfortable. Because across we have Lilith or the black moon. And as I explained in the previous video, the black moon represents the dark zone. So what we don't really know, what we don't want to know, what we ignore and so on and so forth. What is hidden from us as well. That the moon could shed some light because as much as it is going to trigger the energy of Neptune when it reaches the position of the planet, it is also going to trigger the energy of the uh, black moon because of that opposition with it. Now, the opposition is going to be strong on the day and time of the new moon. But here we are still on the 10th of March and it is, you see, 8, 8 in, the, uh, in the evening, 8 p.m. universal time. And that means that on that particular moment and day perhaps, we could feel very uneasy. Because if Neptune represents our intuition, our sixth sense, it could indicate that we will feel that something is wrong because of the black moon opposite Neptune and the moon. But that is not a certain that there is anything concrete about what we are going to feel or to believe, you know. The intuition may be good, but it may not be. So, because it occurs in Pisces, which is Neptune's sign, Neptune is very strong, naturally. And you see that it is also in discordance with Vesta, just like the new moon was. So we are still feeling quite destabilized by something that we don't really understand. And perhaps that we don't want to understand. But it seems that this planet Neptune could have an effect on our physical self as far as um, the fact that we are all made up of about 70-75% water. And as you know most probably the moon has a lot of influence on any uh, quantity of water and the tides in the seas are there to, or the oceans are there to, uh, to prove it. So there is a moment when we could actually feel really uplifted somehow by some, um, by some force that could come from above, from heaven. It's something very strong which could really make us uh, feel how spiritual we are, but without really giving us concrete answers to the questions that we may be asking ourselves. The answers may come when the moon reaches Mercury, which is going to happen quite soon after that, because as you can see, Mercury is at one degree here in Aries. So let's have a look at the next uh, chart. And uh, that next chart shows on the 11th of March at 3 in the morning. So that is, of course, universal time. It could be different, much different, according to your position on Earth, you know, your country of residence. If you're west of Greenwich, it'll be much earlier than that. 
and if you're east of Greenwich, the same it will be perhaps much later than that. So work it out for yourself because it is quite important to find out the times when actually the moon reaches such positions. And so Mercury represents our intellect, our brains, our grey matter. And you see there is here what we call a sextile, which is a 60 degree angle. And there is just about 60 degrees. So it is a very strong aspect. And it is a beneficial one. Because Pluto represents, in that type of configuration, our ability to regenerate. And because Mercury represent, represents our intellect, I think that we will be able to go much deeper into what we want to explain, to share, and um, to understand. So that is going to most probably uh, reinforce our ability to communicate with others, to, you know, to share ideals and opinions and so on, and to find also answers deep inside ourselves or in somehow a very deep sort of manner. You know, I mean, by that, that the answers that we are going to get are real answers, not just something that comes out of our imagination. Mercury's got nothing to do with imagination. It is our grey matter. And because it is in Aries, it makes it quite active and even perhaps overactive. So on that day and time, whatever it is, according to your location once again, what you have to say, say it. What you want to understand Go for it, you know, study, and you will get proper answers, which will most probably help you regenerate a kind of way of thinking, which is represented by Mercury as well. So after that, the moon carries on transiting around the zodiac, and of course, as you can see, it's going to reach the North Lunar Node, and then almost immediately after, it's going to reach Charon, which is here in Aries as well. So let's have a look at this uh, chart. It's going to happen on the 12th of March, around 1 in the morning, and then 5 in the morning. You see, there will be four hours difference between the two transits. So. The moon reaches the north lunar node, and I mentioned that in the previous video. It triggers the need to move forward toward what we want to reach. But it also triggers the south lunar node, representing that from which we should detach ourselves. Okay, if we want to reach a particular goal, we know that it is much better to do it with a... Uh, a lighter type of vehicle uh, and if that vehicle is light then we won't use as much power as much energy to reach the goal uh, so symbolically it means that we could find the right um, the right uh, proportions of energies to fulfill the fact that we can achieve what we want to achieve while we can leave behind what we may have achieved before or perhaps what we haven't been able to achieve and accept the fact that we haven't been able to achieve. We cannot achieve everything in life, right? So if you accept the fact or if you accept your failures as well, your flaws, then you can sort of let go of them without forgetting that you need to work on something that may make you stronger and better, of course. But the North Union Node represents the uh, direction to take. And when the Moon reaches that North Union Node, the direction is going to become much clearer and more um, determining for you. 
and Karen, which is next to uh, the north lunar node, represents health. Well, it may be health as such, but it could be health in any area of your life. Uh, and if it is the case, the north lunar node represents that toward which we should be going, going toward a better health. And we'll need to do what needs to be done to achieve that, right? And it may be health as such, as I said earlier on, or health in another area of your life, any area where, well, something is not going so good. So that means that you may have that potential to achieve something quite interesting. And uh, unfortunately, if I may say, there is an inconjunct here, which is a, um, an angle of about 150 degrees around the uh, circle with the black moon. And the black moon represents the dark zone once again. And that dark zone is always around somehow. There is always in our life a dark zone somewhere. So our mission, I would say, is to determine where the dark zone is and what the dark zone is hiding. Because once we discover that, we can deal with it, right? But the inconscient represents the tendency that we have to postpone, procrastinate, as I said. Um, and it may be that because we will worry about the consequences or the potential consequences or the um, uncertainty of what we may decide when the, the moon reaches the north lunar node, the direction to take. All right, as I said in the title of this uh, reading, okay, new beginning, but where, how, and when? Well, that would be a good time to begin that new path that you may have chosen for yourself on the 12th of March or on the 11th of March in the evening if you are west of the uh, Greenwich line, universal timeline. But this is an interesting configuration because it is occurring in Mars' sign in Aries, which is the sign of action and reaction. And we need to consider the fact that we can act and react strongly, quickly, and that we can speed a bit, not too much, to reach the goal that we've set for, for ourselves. And if there is something that we need to do, we will need to do it on that day. If we wait, it could be too late afterwards. So it doesn't mean that it is an ultimatum. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can So the answer is what you will decide the answer is on that particular day and time. What you're going to decide is going to be, of course, the main reason why you are going to achieve something or not. The main reason why you're going to succeed or not. And that will be uh, the challenge. Now, this is the end of this uh, second video. The next one will deal with the following transits uh, of the Moon, and that is when it reaches uh, Jupiter and uh, Uranus, and also Vesta. So, uh, once again, if you want to watch that following video and discover what the Moon has in store for you during the period until the full Moon, well, just click on the thumbnail that will appear at the end of this video and you will reach that video. Thank you very much for your interest in my work and uh, see you soon. Bye for now.